All right, welcome back to the Friday Show, presented this week by Indiana Racing and the state's Breed Development Fund. More about that coming up. I'm Scott Jagow, along with Ray Pollock. We're glad to have you with us. Ray, next week is the Eclipse Awards at Gulfstream Park. Every year around this time, I come to the realization that there's only one rule when it comes to the Eclipse Awards. There are no rules. <laughs> and it makes it difficult in some of these categories. Some of them are slam dunks. But others are competitive for the reason that it's hard to compare apples and oranges, wouldn't you say? Yeah, I would. Uh, uh, there's not much suspense in most of the horse categories, but there's, there's two categories that I think really kind of demonstrate why I think we should have rules. So that's just my personal belief, and that's the, the male turf and the female turf. Each one, you've got a horse that is a finalist, that won one race, a Breeders' Cup race. And this is no knock on the Breeders' Cup, but that's the only race they ran in North America. In the male turf, it's expert eye. In the female turf, it's enable. In each category, there's a, a very good uh, American, North American-based horse who had a strong year-long campaign here in North America. These are the North American awards. In the, in the male turf, it's Stormy Liberal, who won the Breeders' Cup turf sprint for the second year in a row. And the female turf, it's Sister Charlie, who won four grade one races in uh, 2018, had a sensational year. If you ask racing fans, have you ever heard of Enable? Have you ever heard of Sister Charlie? I'm sure more would say Enable because she won the ARC and she became the first horse to win the ARC and the Breeders' Cup turf in the same year. Um, you don't count the ARC, I don't think. These are the North American awards. So I think one rule should be at least two starts in North America to qualify. Well, and it's two starts, and it's three starts. I don't know where you draw the line, but I do know that it all depends from a voter's perspective on how much context you allow in to your tunnel vision or whatever you want to call it. Uh, because by the book, you would say, okay, you can only count races in North America. But is that really uh, what happens? Or you can only count races from this year. But with Stormy Liberal, for example, in the male turf, I think I would consider in the back of my mind the fact that he won the Breeders' Cup Turf Sprint last year and then was able to duplicate that feat this year, and I would give some weight to that, even though it was last year, I get it. But the fact that he did it back-to-back, -back, Turf Sprint, very chaotic race, very difficult to do, and he finished winning four uh, uh, races in a row, ending, culminating with that Breeders' Cup uh, win, and then there's an able. Do you count the turf, or the arc rather? I mean, you shouldn't by the book, but how do you leave it out when she accomplished something no other horse has accomplished before, winning that prestigious race in France, shipping to North America, and then winning three weeks later the Breeders' Cup turf, and she was the star of the Breeders' Cup coming in and going out of it. So, again, you know, I get where you're coming from, uh, and I think Sister Charlie probably should win, but it's a subjective vote, and I bet an able will win. You know, you could say the same thing about Justify. Uh, he became the first horse since Apollo to win the Kentucky Derby without the benefit of a race as a two-year-old. But these are the awards for 2018. You're not supposed to look back and say, well, he didn't race in 2017. This is an amazing feat that he accomplished by not racing as a two-year-old, still winning the Kentucky Derby. Uh, I don't know. I, I think maybe bonus points is what is what happens in, in some of these cases. People look at what Stormy Liberal did or what Justify did in not in not racing it too. So I don't know. I think I think rules would benefit the Eclipse Awards. I know they're not broken necessarily, but if Enable wins the female turf division, I mean she's a sensational horse. She deserves all the accolades, in, especially in Europe where she's based. And Sister Charlie doesn't win. I think something's wrong with the system. Well, who won the Eclipse Award for Horse of the Year when Blame won the Breeders' Cup Classic? It was Zenyatta who lost that race. But she was the star power that year, and she was the filly that accomplished so much and came up this short, and people rewarded her for, for that effort. 
So again, I and in fact, I I believe I voted for her that year. I think too many rules is going to burden this, and it's going to be a slippery slope, and you're not going you're going to have other problems. I'm almost of the mind to leave it the way it is and let people vote what they want to vote because they're going to do that anyway. I mean, some of them are going to be lazy and just look at the standings and say, oh, the top earner, that should be the number one jockey or outstanding jockey. And other people are going to think about it a little bit more. Uh, Bob Baffert, for example, won the Triple Crown this year. He had a 32% win rate and 500 fewer starts than Chad Brown who's probably going to win the award. How do you compare the two? I mean, 500 starts difference. In fact, Steve Asmussen, who's one of the other finalists, had a thousand more starts than Chad Brown. <laughs> he didn't have nearly the wins to correlate with that. Um, so I don't think he's gonna win, but he's one of the finalists and I don't see how you compare the two. Yeah, I think that uh, Steve Asmussen, if nothing else, should get the Reader's Digest Award for being able to read condition books uh, to that extent, I mean, geez, that's an amazing number of starts for a guy. But it's, I think the human divisions are the most um, difficult, not just, not just the trainer, but leading owner and leading breeder. How do you compare someone like John Gunther, who bred Justify, uh, with someone like Winstar, who has a huge breeding operation? John Gunther, you know, with a small broodmare band, not only one uh, the Triple Crown races as Breeder of Justify, but he had uh, Vino Rosso, the, the Wood Memorial winner, the Grade Two winner. He had two other Grade Three winners, and he had a homebred that won for him in Royal Ascot, the Grade One uh, St. James's Palace. So, of course, maybe you're not supposed to count that race because it happened in Europe. Uh, it's very difficult, I think, for the voters to compare a John Gunther breeding operation with a Windstar just like you're saying about Chad Brown and Bob Baffert, raw numbers really shouldn't shouldn't be the deciding factor in my opinion. And these are awards. I mean, this isn't life or death. It's not like, uh, it, it's such a big deal. I mean, it is a big deal, but in context, we're, we're handing out awards to people. They are honors. It's not, it's not supposed to be definitive. Uh, if it was, then you would just start the year and say, here's the criteria. And then whoever has the, you know, top, who's at the top of the standings, then you win. But it's not like that because Dale Romans, the year he won trainer, wasn't the leading earner. He didn't have the most graded stakes wins that year. But the voters thought he deserved it because he campaigned several top horses and had a, a fantastic year. You know, we look at Justify. He won the Triple Crown, but I think you talked about bonus points. I think he's being penalized in some people's minds for American Pharaoh having broken the curse in, in uh, 2015. And so this accomplishment doesn't look quite as big compared to that. And also the hanky panky in the Belmont, the fact that his connections swept him away to the breeding shed right away. I think it leaves a, a taste in people's mouths where before the Breeders' Cup, people said, if Accelerate wins, he should be in the conversation because he's finished out the year. He shipped across country. People said he couldn't do that. His trainer was blanked at the Breeders' Cup over 41. They all the doubters, and then he proved them wrong. So he earned his way into that conversation. Yeah, he did, and he should he should be in the conversation. I, I still think a, a triple crown uh, victory uh, sweep is is an enormous accomplishment just because it did happen in 2015 with American Pharaoh shouldn't diminish what Justify did. Uh, and if you look at Justify, he had six starts. That's more than a lot of the other horses that uh, are up for Eclipse Award consideration in multiple divisions, including some of the older older male, older male and female divisions. So, you know, he didn't race 12 months, but he raced half a year, he had six starts, and he never lost. Yeah, I mean, you can look at it that way, certainly, that, you know, uh, he only raced in the late winter and spring, but at the same time, you point out he had the same number of starts as, uh, you know, the contenders in other categories or more starts. You know, again, I would also, you know, if we're comparing him to Accelerate, of course, Justify didn't get a chance to race against older horses. So there's that issue. I think Justify is going to win. I do think it's a very close uh, decision. I, I think in the end, Justify is going to probably win handily. But... You know, again, we're going back to how do you compare these things? 
Justify certainly is the name recognition this year. If you said, who was the horse who stood out this year to the public at large? It would certainly be Justify. Most people out in the mainstream have never heard of Accelerate. So uh, again, it's all about how you look at it and it's an award. I mean, should the connections of Justify be rewarded for some of the things that happened this year? I, I question that, but certainly he, the, the horse himself earned it. Yeah, I just in, in the human categories, I, I think the the uh, equine divisions are, are are easy to look at because you've got past performances. In the human categories, I wish the voters would do a little bit more research than just look at the top of the earnings and say, okay, this person gets my vote because you know he he won the most money. Uh, there's you know there's there's graded stakes to look at. There's grade one stakes to look at. The, the NTRA could probably do a better job with the ballot that they send out to voters uh, to give them some some context. Uh, you know when you're looking at a, at an owner that has a small stable versus a mega stable versus you know a trainer that had had uh, a sensational year based on the numbers that he has. The voters you know. Absent that better information from the NTRA, voters need to do a little bit of homework. Or, I think in some of the categories, maybe it should go to a committee of people representing the three uh, bodies that currently decided. And that's the way the breeder, leading breeder, used to be done. Yeah. What do you think about this? What should be the most important element in deciding horse of the year or jockey, outstanding jockey, or any of the other categories? Uh, with, should it be graded stakes wins, grade one wins? Uh, should it be um, impact on the sport? We talked about that. Let us know. We have a poll on our website at pollockreport.com. Friday show this week presented by Indiana Racing and the Breed Development Fund there. 20 plus Indiana bred, Indiana sired uh, stakes races of $100,000 or more and more than $16 million in incentives. Indiana horse racing. All right, that's going to do it for this edition of the Friday Show. Thanks for joining us, and we'll talk to you next time.